All right, we're wrapping up chi-square tests for homogeneity. So we're going to talk about it now. Remember, we already did chi-square for goodness of fit. So now we're going to do homogeneity, and we're going to do independence next after this. And then we're done with chi-squared. have a little bit to play with slopes. We are done. As a reminder, I have notes for all of this. This is all from statsmedic.com that I've kind of modified to fit my use. Those notes are down below. There's also a link to a three-week review course that is totally free for you to use, either in your classroom or if you're a student by yourself. Um, please make sure you do that. Again, share with friends. Like, subscribe, comment, all that other good stuff. And I would love to hear how you thought things went. So either drop me an email or say something down below. Four important ideas here. Okay, so there's a lot. I wanted to make sure I had space, so I typed it out so it was easy to use. Okay, so first big set of important ideas. Um, hello, delete. There we go. So for hypotheses, okay. The two differences here is that Null hypothesis, there is no difference between the distribution from what we're seeing. Make sure you name the categorical variable there so you can kind of give some context to it, and then name the two different populations. For the alternative hypothesis, you're going to say there is a difference between whatever your categorical, categorical variable is, and then you're going to also mention what your two populations are. So null hypothesis, everything's fine. Alternative hypothesis, something's going on. Clear? Good. Also down here is the expected counts option. So this is how you find expected counts. Remember, the concept is you take the percentage of what each of the different values of the category is, and then you're going to multiply that by the different total populations for you to, or different subpopulations for both population one and population two. The fast, easy way is this formula right here. Big idea number two. Well, maybe just do that. Conditions. You're still doing random, you're still doing 10% rule, and you're still doing large counts. Large counts, again, with chi-squared, since we're talking about not just, you know, success and failure, we're talking about multiple multiple values in the category have to be bigger than or equal to 5 instead of 10. You also have to remember here that for p-values, when you're doing degrees of freedom here, you're going to have to, since we've got two different rows, and we've got a row and a column now, you're going to have to do... Um, the degrees of freedom for the rows and times the degrees of freedom for the columns. So basically it's rows minus one times column minus one. And then down there obviously is the formula for chi-squared CDF. And then last but not least, um, the way that you can tell these two apart, and it's fairly clear, chi-squared for goodness of fit has one sample, one variable. You're comparing it to the distribution that the population reportedly has. Okay? So you're seeing how does my data fit in with what is supposed to happen. For, uh, for homogeneity, you have two samples and you're comparing that one variable and then you're comparing those two samples and say how alike are those. In other words, how homogeneous are they? How much, you know, that type of thing, okay? All of them still have the four steps, their state, plan, do, calculate. Okay, so again, lots of information there, but all of it is very similar to A, everything we've done with testing to begin with, but B, also very similar to what we do with chi-square tests before. The differences here primarily, slight difference in terms of how we spell, our, spell out our hypotheses, how we find our expected counts, and then um, just degrees of freedom for that, okay? So for your check your understanding, this is different if you if you have if teachers, if you happen to pull this directly from StatsMedic, I forgot to update this problem. So I'm using the older one. So my apologies if that throws you off. Um, and so what ended up happening was um, Abby Maria for class project wanted to know if the gender of the interviewer could affect the responses to a survey question. So the subjects in their experiment were 100 males from their school. Half the males were randomly asked, would you vote for a female president by a female interviewer? And the other half of males were asked by the same question by a male interviewer. The table shows the results below. So they're going to ask you a few questions based upon this data. I'm going to walk you through walk you through it here in a minute. But go ahead and pause it and then unpause it when you're ready to check your answers. I'm assuming you're ready to check your answers. So here we go. So the first question down here is this. State your hypotheses. So the first one, remember, everything's the same. So we're going to say there is no difference in the distribution of responses based upon the interviews, interviewer's gender. The alternative hypothesis would be there is a difference in the distribution of responses based upon the interviewer's gender. Okay? So... Um, bum, 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 bum. So for your, showing your calculations here, you've got this. Okay, so you've got, for the male, yes one. So that would be for this group right here. 
you're going to go 69 divided by 100%. So basically, it's 69%. Uh, and you're going to say, what's 69% of 50? So when you do that, you're going to get 34.5. Now, notice what I said before when we are talking about the gummy bears. There we had about a two-third, one-third distribution. Here we have 50-50. We have 50 males being asked by men. We have 50 males or by a male interviewer, and we have 50 males being asked by a female interviewer. So notice here, your expected values straight across the board are going to be the same all the way down. Okay. Don't assume that unless you see the fact that you do actually have the two population one and population two do in fact have the same size. Um, but that makes your life a little bit easier, obviously, from that. And then to calculate out the chi-squared statistic, again, start it off a little bit. So I've got the first two. I ended up with the last one. I do all of that, 4.1 or 4.25. Okay. And then there's chi-squared there. Degrees of freedom here would be two because I've got three categories here. So that means I've got two degrees of freedom there, two, two going across. That's one degree of freedom. Two times one is two. And that's it. Okay. So hopefully that's helpful. Hopefully you like it. We are going to um, move on to chi-squared tests for independence next. Um, and then we're done with our chi-squared. And as I said, we have a little bit of stuff to do with slope, and away we go. So hope everything's going well. Subscribe, like, share with your friends, and let me know what you think. So we'll talk to you soon. Bye.